as a coach, as somebody who works with leaders to help them change behaviour, it is not enough for us to get a new intellectual model. If it, if it was, we could stop the session now and everybody would wake up tomorrow and behave differently. And we know that that's not how change happens. To change, we need to change habits. So the bit of the research that I was keen to get into in my own work was to was really get under the skin of those uh, three pillars and say, what does that mean in terms of behavioural habits? And the habits that I can share with you that have come out of that DBA research, there's nine habits, and I'm going to go through these very quick and we can maybe explore them a bit more in the questions if there's a habit that particularly grabs you. Three habits of ability. We need to deliver, we need to coach, we need to be consistent. Delivery, I think, hasn't changed. Business is a performance business. We, we, we will al always did have to deliver. Coaching, uh, in the past, I told you what to do with my bigger brain. But these days, people don't believe the myth of the bigger brain anymore. And they want to be coached rather than told. Being consistent, I used to work for managers at British Gas and Cadbury who saw it as their job to be unpredictable to do something different on a Wednesday to what they did on a Monday. The theory was that it kept you on your toes. It worked in the old model. Nothing destroys trust as quick as unpredictability. Three habits of integrity. Be honest, be open, be humble. Honesty. We've always needed to be honest, but now we need to be ruthlessly honest. The bar on honesty has gone up to a completely new level. What used to be gamesmanship, uh, spin, white lies, exaggeration. If you could get away with it, you did then that's gone in a world where nothing can be hidden. Being open. When I was being brought up in business, you didn't show weakness because you thought that if you did, it, it would be used against you. It would be exploited. In this new world, showing weakness, showing vulnerability, being open, reassures, reassures people that actually you are a human being. And that's reassuring to them because they know that they are human beings as well. Uh, one of the phrases I, I, I love in this research is remember before you were a CEO you were a human being and it's true isn't it but somehow we in that old model we were seduced into forgetting that reality and being humble Jim Collins his book from good to great we owe Jim Collins a lot in terms of his research on the value of humility and being humble in business his his level five leadership his pinnacle of leadership he talked about those level five leaders and he said they have a paradoxical combination of intense professional will and extreme personal humility. They get things done, but they do it on behalf of a cause bigger than themselves. And three habits of benevolence. Evangelize. Some of you think I've gone all religious on you. <laughs> but evangelize is simply spreading the good news. If we're surrounded by a media and a social media that is spinning negativity and cynicism around us 24 hours a day, then leaders need to get on the pitch and spread the good news. We have to counter that with our voices because there are people doing great things in business but we're just not used to evangelising about business. Being brave, I don't mean physical bravery, uh, personal bravery, I mean moral bravery. The sort of moral bravery that compelled Richard Pennycook, the chief exec of the co-op, to take a salary cut earlier this year because he felt it was inappropriate for him as the head of a, a mutual organisation <coughs> to be earning the same as the heads of PLC organisations. That's moral bravery. And last but not least, this awful word, awful, awful word, kindness. If I had used kindness on my MBA module back in 1990, I think they would have hounded me out of the room. What's kindness got to do with leadership? Kindness is common. We talk about empathy, we talk about emotional intelligence, we talk about care programmes. We can't quite bring ourselves to use the K word yet. But I think kindness is coming, and leaders who get kindness and really capitalise on that can really seize an opportunity with trust, because kindness is like a purple dye. All it takes is one drop, and it completely transforms the situation. Real magical thing, kindness, in terms of building trust. So those are our nine habits.